Hi, my name is Andrew George, a 99th percentile MCAT tutor for MCAT Self Prep, the creators of the free MCAT prep course. In this video, I'm going to teach you about using note cards in your studies. Throughout college, I use note cards in every single one of my classes. Without this advanced system of review, I'm sure that my GPA would have been much lower. I am excited to share with you how I use note cards to remember every single piece of important information. Although this video is directed towards students studying for the MCAT, it is equally applicable to students studying for other exams and other classes. Now, it is very likely that you have used note cards before. Many students like to use them to get ready for vocabulary tests. The stereotypical note card has a word on the front and a definition on the back, usually a definition that came straight from the textbook. I'm sorry to break it to you, but that model of note card making is not going to bring you MCAT success. The reason it won't work is because learning requires more than just putting a bunch of definitions in separate folders inside your brain. Learning requires you to build a network of meaningful connections. And the purpose of note cards is to facilitate the creation of a strong network of MCAT material in your brain. The more connections you make between one MCAT concept and another, the better. The purpose of this chapter is to help you understand how to make exceptional note cards that will help you create that strong network. First of all, you need to understand when you should make a note card. Typically, students will make a note card whenever they see a bolded term. While that isn't a bad approach, it isn't the best. You should make a note card every time you encounter something that doesn't fit into the current knowledge network that exists in your brain. Allow me to explain. In your brain, you have a dog network. Everything that has to do with dogs is connected to it. And you started building this network when you were two years old. When you first encountered a dog, you may have defined it as a human that is hairy and walks on all fours. After all, you likely had no concept of pets versus humans. Anyways, then one day you heard that dog bark. What? Dogs bark? Pfft, you had no idea. So, you added that information to the network in your brain. This is when you should make a note card during your MCAT study. On a separate occasion, you encountered another dog. He was hairy, walked on all fours, and barked. Nothing stood out to you, and you went on with your day as if nothing extraordinary had happened. This is when you shouldn't make a note card. You should make note cards based on what is news to you, not based on what is emphasized in a certain textbook. Studying for the MCAT is a process of discovery. Making note cards is simply a process that will allow you to keep track of what you've discovered. The next thing you need to know is what to write on the front and back of your note card. Instead of the stereotypical vocab word on the front and the definition on the back, you should start writing a question on the front and an answer on the back. Literally put yourselves in the shoes of the MCAT test makers. Think to yourself, if I were to test someone on this, what question would I ask? Try to mimic the level of difficulty that you see on the MCAT. And don't worry, understanding the level of difficulty that that is will come with time. For instance, here's a concept that you will come across during your MCAT studying. Operant conditioning is a type of learning in which the strength of a behavior is modified by its consequences. Now, you could easily whip up a note card with operant conditioning on the front and its bland definition on the back, but that is a low yield test question, especially since the MCAT will never directly test you on a definition. They want to know if you can use that definition and use that concept to solve problems in logical manner. Now, a good note card will have a question that's more like, a mom gives a kid a cookie for doing their chores. This is an example of what type of conditioning? Why? The answer on the back of the card could say, operant conditioning, because the child's behavior is being modified by the consequences. Now, not only do you understand the definition, 
but you also understand its application and can explain it in simple terms. The next thing to understand is that the MCAT is not a free response exam. Everything is multiple choice. That means you don't need to straight up recall anything. You just need to be able to recognize terms. That means you shouldn't waste your brain power trying to recall words that are really hard for you to remember. For instance, if you think that you will have a hard time regurgitating the term lysosome, put it on the front of your card instead of the back of the card. You could ask, what key fun function would a cell be unable to perform if it lacked a lysosome? This way, you are memorizing only the information that the MCAT will test you on instead of wasting your time trying to recall difficult terms that you wrote on the back of the note card. This will save you time and stress. Also, each note card should only cover a single topic. For instance, don't ask yourself, what are the major functions of the nucleosome, and then list five different functions on the back. A better question would be, what would happen to protein production if your cells didn't have nucleosomes? The answer is simple and not multifaceted. Each note card should only take you 10 seconds or less to answer when you are reviewing your note cards. Moral of the story is to keep your note cards as simple as possible. Last of all, one of the most important things to understand is how often you should review your note cards. Programs like Anki are useful in this regard because their built-in algorithm tells you when to review a certain card. You can find Anki online just by searching for it, and you can download the program to your desktop for free. If you decide to use paper note cards, on the other hand, please check out our lesson on note cards in our free prep course. It will illustrate a simple system that you can implement to ensure a thorough review of every note card. Feel free to use a different system if you would like. The basic premise, though, is to review them before you are answering more than 25% of your note cards incorrectly. Just be sure to make a plan for how often you are going to review and stick to it. Now, it is going to be a lot of work to make note cards and review them carefully. But keep in mind that after doing practice problems, this is the most important part of your MCAT preparation. Don't give it anything but your best effort. Moving on to new material can be extremely tempting, but it is a waste of time to learn new material when the material you have already learned is deteriorating. If you're going to be diligent in one aspect of your study, be diligent in this.